of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Invited by the grace of God, as his baptized children, we entreat his mercy, confessing our sins and receiving his forgiveness. O merciful Father, hear our plea for your constant help in this struggle of living in the strength of our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We lay our sins on his own atoning death. Raise us in the assurance of your forgiveness and your power to create a new and contrite heart, that we may serve you in holiness and forever sing your praises, both now and forever. Hear us for the sake of Jesus, our Lord, and our eternal King. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, strengthen you with his grace. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have extended your invitation to forgiveness, life, and salvation to be proclaimed and heard throughout the world. Grant that all people hear and learn to respond to your love in a constant faith empowered by your word and sacraments. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our service of the Word begins with an Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 66. For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory, and I will set a sign among them, and from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Puol, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tabal and to Javan, to the coastlands far away, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations, and they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath. All flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My sons, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not discipline? If you have left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time and it seems best to them as it seems best to them, but he disciplines us for for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping heads and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. 
For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gatherings, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will they escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more and I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I would invite you to please rise for the verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. People will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, And you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. Then he will answer you, I do not know where you have come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out, and people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we invite the children forward for the children's message. Actually, let's meet at the rear of church in uh, by the doors and back. Come to the back, kids. kiddos. Very good. A little crowded back here, not quite as much space as up front. I wanted to meet with you today by these. What are these? They're doors. And uh, you can tell that these doors are closed. That's correct. And in other we could pretend that there was a lock on these doors. And if there was a lock on these doors, if I pushed real hard, could I get in? No. No, when the doors are locked, they're locked. And you can't get in. That's the point and purpose of doors, is to keep some things over there and some things over here. That's the point of doors, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have them in your homes. We have them here at church. And do you know what? There are actually doors that lead to heaven. And do you know that the doors to heaven were locked? That we were on the outside. Because of our sin, those doors to heaven were locked, and we couldn't get in. But you know what? Jesus came, and he took all of our sin, and he paid its price by dying on the cross, and Jesus unlocked the doors to heaven, and in fact... He swung the doors to heaven wide open for you and me because Jesus loves us and died for us and rose for us. Heaven's doors are open to you and to me. What wonderful good news that is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that when the doors to heaven were closed and locked, you opened them by sending Jesus to die and rise. What joy fills our hearts to know heaven is our home. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, boys and girls. And we go back to your seat. We continue with the hymn of the day.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Our text today, as I've said, is from the Gospel reading. Jesus encourages uh, hearers in his day and today to strive to enter through the narrow door. Dear Christian friends, as I told the children a moment ago, and as you are fully aware, doors are a part of our everyday living. You probably don't think twice about the vast numbers of doors we go in and out of all day long. There are doors at the house, in our bedrooms and bathroom. There's a door to the car, to the store, to the office. And even as you came into church this morning, there are doors that are necessary to enter before you can sit down in the sanctuary. When you find locked doors that you expected to be open, no matter the circumstance, there is usually disappointment or frustration because those doors become barriers to where we intended to be. Now in the text that's before us in the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 13, someone comes to Jesus with a question. It's in verse 23. He says, Lord, will those who are saved be few? Now understand, this was, this was a rather common question among the rabbis of Jesus' day. Will there be lots of people who are saved, or will it be just a very few people? And that same kind of question is asked even still today. Maybe not exactly that way, but that's what's behind the question, what does it take to get into heaven? Is being good good enough? Is being better than most what's required to stand before an all-holy God? Or what about those who don't have the chance to hear about what God has done for them in Christ? Do they get a pass? Now I want you to notice what Jesus does in this text. He doesn't actually directly answer the question. What he actually does is turn the question onto the questioner. He says to the questioner, you strive to enter through the narrow door. He takes the question about everyone else and he puts it on the one asking the question and says, you, don't worry about everyone else, you, Strive to enter through the narrow door. What Jesus does is he asks the questioner, what about you? And Jesus would ask the very same question today. What about you? What about your salvation? What about your standing before an all-holy God? This Jesus says that the door is, in fact, narrow. And by that, he implies that, indeed, few will enter through it. And then he also strangely says, strive to enter through that narrow door. Strive. 
The Greek word here has the root agon, where we get our word agonize. Huh? Strive, agonize, struggle to enter through the narrow door. Make the effort necessary to follow Jesus. This very same word, agon, is used in 1 Timothy 6 when Paul urges Timothy to fight the good fight of faith, to struggle, to struggle against temptation, to agonize over my sin and my failings before God, to come to him in repentance and sorrow over my sin, to resist believing that there are shortcuts into the kingdom of God, to be distracted by the things of this world, Jesus' encouragement is to persevere in the faith, to strive, he says, to agonize, to enter through the narrow door. Now this encouragement from Jesus is not in conflict with our Lutheran theology. You know, from Ephesians 2, verse 1, Paul tells us we are dead in our trespasses and sins, and dead people strive towards nothing. They make no decisions, no invitations, because they're dead in their sins. They struggle towards nothing. They're dead. But in your baptism, you were raised from spiritual death to spiritual life. You are no longer dead in your sins. In your baptism, you were raised with Christ to live with him now and to live with him forever. And it is in that context that Jesus encourages you and me today to strive, to struggle, to agonize to enter through that narrow door. And the good news for you and me is that this, again, this Greek word, agon, to agonize, is the very same word that is used of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he agonizes by sweating drops of blood because of what he is about to endure. He strives to fulfill his Father's will by going to the cross and becoming sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. What Jesus accomplished at the cross flings wide open the door to eternal life. And what joy and peace is ours to know that that door is wide open to you and to me and to all who look on Christ for salvation. But know this, that open door is closing. like the store that has a limited time offer, the time to, to take advantage of that in the store is now before that window closes. And even stores that don't have limited time offerings, they have store hours. And if you come after hours and you see people inside and you knock on the door, 
I only need this. What's their answer? Sorry, we're closed. But the door is open. Thanks be to God by what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for us. Jesus' point in this little parable is don't ignore the open door. Don't take for granted what God has done for you in Christ. Strive to enter through the narrow door in repentance and in faith and receiving God's wondrous gifts in word and in sacrament. Yes, Jesus, death and resurrection has opened the door to you and to me and to all who believe. And now, now is the time to enter that door. I would venture to say that there isn't a single person in this room who will know the person I'm talking about, and I'm not going to share his name because it doesn't matter. Pastor Waymeyer knows who he is. He sat right about there, starting about six months ago. His whole adult life had been lived outside of Christ and outside of the church. And he came here about six months ago. He came and he went through adult instruction with me. And we had several personal conversations about what God has done for him in Christ and the peace that he has in the Savior who died and rose for him. He entered through that open door. And a month ago, he had a heart attack and Pastor Waymeyer did his funeral. We don't know when our last breath will be. And the time to enter that door is today. The time to influence our children for Christ is today. Like never before, this world is chewing up and spitting, up, spitting out our children right and left. The time to enter that narrow door is now. And of course, back to this question. Lord, will those who are saved be few? Of course, that's the wrong question. And Jesus points it out rightly. Will you be saved? And the good news is that every single person within the sound of my voice both here in this room and on the internet. Today you have again entered through that narrow door by receiving what God has done for you in Jesus Christ. In word and in sacrament, you have entered through that narrow door. Again, Jesus' point, when he says, strive to enter through the narrow door, is don't ignore the open door. And today, thanks be to God, you and I have not ignored that open door. And in word and in sacrament, again, we have received all that Jesus Christ, who identified himself in John chapter 10 as the door. Today, we have entered and received by God's grace all that he has done for us in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing as our offering is brought forward. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all the faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to remain constant in the struggle of faith, empowered by the cross of Christ, filled with hope and confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, and strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold offices of service in your church, that by their work and example, faith may abound and your kingdom increase into all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, and grant health and favor to all who bear the offices of government in our land. Guard and protect all who serve in the armed forces of our country. Give them faithfulness and success in their service, and grant that their homecomings be joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Especially we remember before you Kathy Clammers, Bonnie Weiscarver, Joanne Shibley, and all we name in our bulletin and upon our heart. Be with those who suffer persecution of faith have mercy on those with whom, for whom death draws near and for all who mourn the death of loved ones. We especially pray that you give peace and comfort to Annie Munger and her, and her family at the death of her mother, Teresa. Keep us in, um, sustain and bless all who care for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in our church and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you bless all students and teachers who are returning to school this week, that you bless them with the knowledge and wisdom in Christ throughout this new school year 
And we give you thanks for the baptism of Hadley this, uh, at the late service today, that you would continue to bless her in the covenant of grace as you establish this new life in her and bring her through the narrow door. And to your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing. Amen.